Hello, everybody, and we're back with the Sulky Show, and it's one of the big weeks of the racing calendar, of course. Now, those in the thoroughbred world will be heading off to Berkshire with their top hat and tails. In harness racing, we're going in the other direction. We're off to Musselburgh, to uh, the capital city of Scotland, Edinburgh, for one of the jewels in the harness racing crown, uh, the uh, big Musselburgh two-day race meeting featuring on Wednesday the AWT Transport famous Musselburgh Pace, one of the great races in the British harness racing calendar and, fair to say, the oldest. Is that right, guys? It's got to be, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think it must be. And, uh, as you can see, on the the Sulky Show tonight, we have got uh, Sarah Thomas. How are you, Sarah? I'm okay, thank you, Darren. How are you? Hey, I'm all right. Have you... Isn't, isn't that where you hosted the Harness Racing Awards from back in March? Have you moved since then? The, no, this is this is my corner. This is my selfish corner now. It's, it's a slightly better um, background than where I used to sit before because I used to get people telling me that I needed to tidy up the cushions on the sofa and the throws and like all the random camera equipment on the floor. So this slightly hides how chaotic my living room is. Now, talking about chaotic, we're joined by the one and only multiple champion trainer Alexis Layla and I'm thinking I'm thinking you look ever so calm and relaxed Alexis bearing in mind this is the eve of one of the biggest meetings of the year you've got you've got you know a number of horses going to the meeting lots of big chances Are you look so calm and relaxed I thought I thought the place would be in utter chaos now at this stage no well it was it has been chaos today actually it's been a lot of chaos, but um, I haven't got as big a field at Musselburgh as I normally would have. Sometimes I have a convoy of lorries traveling to Musselburgh, especially um, two years ago because it was all on the same day. Um, then that was chaotic. But um, the way this week's panned out, we had Turprints on Saturday and then we had Musselburgh Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we have York Saturday, Appleby Sunday. So it's quite because we haven't had a lot of racing and now we've got five meetings within eight days. So I was able to spread the horses out a little bit and make Musselburgh not so chaotic and hopefully a little bit more enjoyable. And that, that's it. That's, that's a good point, actually. You know, obviously, you know, there's a lot of pressure on you because these are the big races. These are the races that matter. Do you really enjoy it? Do you get to enjoy it? Or is it a case of you enjoy it after the event, when you look back at it? Yeah, after the event, like going back to two years ago, I think I had um, 18 runners and I had six horses in the final of the famous Musselburgh Pace and I never saw one race. And as good as it was, it was just getting a report back off. The, uh, my job is obviously to make sure the horses go onto the track fully prepared. They have all of their equipment on and everything is right for that race which is, although I have, um, you know, people helping me, Heidi, and um, obviously other grooms that come up and help on the day, it's still my job to make sure all the boots, the poles, the tongue ties, the bluffs, everything that is earplugs, that's my job to make sure they go onto the track fully prepared for that. So I normally stay at the horse box and I just send, prepare people to go arrange, well, you're doing race one, you're doing race two, because... Musselburgh, they have to be up there in the paddock beforehand. So it means we can't just check them up from the horse box and then away you go. We have to have somebody go up. We have to have somebody come back, which means they're not at the horse box to help, which means I have to then be there. I can't go watch because I have to prepare the next race. So I'm hoping this year I might be able to sneakily watch a race or two. might be good. And there's me thinking the Prime Minister had the toughest job in the land. <laughs> so, so, so how many horses have we actually got going this week? I've got 11 this week. Um, I did have 13 entries, but um, as you will recall, Trevor Starr was a little bit uncooperative at York. We decided that we would withdraw her as she seemed to want to spend a lot of time on just to hind legs, which wasn't really very helpful. Um, so she's been withdrawn and um, 
we unfortunately lost the climatized last week. So um, that was a sad day for us. So I, oh, such a lovely young horse with huge amount of potential. Um, so he won't be coming with us either, which is a terrible shame. But it does happen, unfortunately, in racing. Yeah, well, need, needless to say, you, you, our thoughts are with you on that. And as I say, it's, it's one of the prices we have to pay from time to time. Uh, yeah. In this. No, it does happen. And um, I mean, it's just it's just a shame, you know. He was such a well-bred colt and had a really promising future, qualified beautifully on Saturday. And um, yeah, but that's, like you say, when you have horses, this these things happen. Well, let's... On to a let's, better note. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, be, let's, be, yeah. let's, be, let's, be, yes. let's go through your chances over the, over the two days. I mean, you know, you, you've got a, a stable oozing in quality. So we'll start with, with, with day one. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow. Uh, and looking at uh, tomorrow's uh, handicap here. And looking at the, your first challenge seems to be in the second race, the second heat, with yeah. a new horse to the stable, Tara Woodwill. I was going to ask you, you know, when you take on a new horse, you know, how difficult is it for you? How difficult is it for the horse in terms of adapting to the new surroundings, acclimatising, if you like? Yeah, definitely. Um, because I don't really know the horse, and um, he was a horse that I watched last year, um, that made a great deal of progress, I thought, throughout the year. He seemed, the only thing I had with Tara Wood Will was he either seemed, um, you know, he raced very good, or sometimes he was prone for making bits of mistakes, breaks and things, as you'll be aware. So he seemed to be um, a little bit unpredictable. And for me, just getting him this year, I obviously don't know what would cause him to do that um was it his um you know did he get excitable when he was around other horses was it just that he was maturing and learning to race so all of that I never learned with him last year and um but he has been a lovely horse we didn't get him until March so hence why he hasn't been out this is bringing him on a little sooner than we would have liked but obviously muscle was earlier this year um, but he did qualify nicely last week, didn't put a foot wrong, was very happy with him. And so it's just Musselburgh is not only a race, it's a bit of an obstacle course, <laughs> I always put it, because there's so many different things that horses don't have on a regular race day. So for one is that they, um, they're going right-handed as opposed to left, which a lot of them haven't done. Then they have to tackle the merge from the turf to the sand, which they're not used to doing. And then they have to cross the road. And then they have to be able to stay the distance. So I always think it's a bit of the, um, it, it's, it's not just a regular race, which at Musselboro you find so many horses that win that aren't what you would call in-form horses because they can just overcome all of those things and it works good for them. So I always find you, you get the odd few winners, not one or two, few that you just weren't expecting. So. Yeah, I, I understand. I totally get what you're saying. So you know, yeah. the conventional form, the conventional form book can be turned upside down when you go to somewhere like Musselboro. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Again, going back to our last Musselboro, um, the Hurricane Pace, the last one was a horse that had um, I think it was Crackway Jack, and he was an elderly horse, didn't have a great deal of form, but he could just, he overcame all of those things, and he was an aged state horse, and um, it worked out good for him, So, and you get that at Musselboro, um, which I like sometimes, you know, it, um, it always turns up something new for the books. <laughs> well, and so, yeah, look, this is a horse who was undeniably, he, he undeniably found himself, didn't he? Towards his second yeah. half, he found his feet. I think they, I think there was a window. I think the horse had a wind operation at one stage last year, but he did actually find himself. So he's giving you a nice feel at home. It's a horse. He is. 
about. He's doing everything nice and, um, you know, he's he's a lovely, kind horse and um, we're really enjoying having him in the stable. So I, I said to the owners, um, I don't know if he's going to suit the trip or the track or everything like that, but he's training nice, he's going good and Musselburgh's only on once a year. So we should take him and try him. And if it works out, then he'll be close enough or... Um, or he might just throw his toys out of the pram, but that can happen with any young horse that goes to Musselburgh. Uh, you have to be in it to win it, so that's what we uh, thought to do with him. <laughs> and Sarah, what do you think the champion Tara would will? He was one of the horses that really excited us last year. Oh, definitely. He had a, a, a tremendous 2020. There's a couple of horses in the race that kind of similar season where they picked up a few wins, kind of emerging in that season. Alexis has alluded it to it there a little bit. A lot of those horses that came out and raced last year, they haven't had the chance to race on grass. Um, if they have, it's only been at the start of this season. But some of these horses haven't been out this year. Tara would well be in one. Judy's King is another. Um, and it, there are question marks over not only will they handle the distance, but will they handle you know the grass? Will they handle, like Alexis said, you know, switching to the sand? There's the road. There's so many different things to, to take into consideration with them. Um, but equally, you're not going to know how they handle these things unless you actually give it a go. You, know, you can't shy away from, oh, I'm not sure the horse is going to like this. You need to find out. Musselboro is a, a big stage to try and find that out. But it's because it's that bigger stage, that's where people want to go and, and take their chance with them. So, you know, a horse like Tara would will, equally, like I mentioned, GD's King, another horse that had a tremendous 2020. You know, the connections haven't really had a chance to to figure out what his his form on grass is going to be like this year. So it's a bit of a, a learning curve for them as well. Um, and in that race, Vina Rosa, uh, she's another one. She's very, very inexperienced when it comes to racing. Um, but but people enter these horses, you know, there, there's some level of confidence to it. It's not just, I want to take my chance. It's, I think I'm going there with a chance. Um, and I think everybody should commend it for that. Uh, of the slightly more experienced horses in the race on that one in particular, I want to mention Reed's Coco with Rick Park. Um, I think he's a horse that, that might actually enjoy the trip. He's got that little bit more experience. He's got the grass races under his belt. Um, so it's all of these races, quite frankly, I've gone through the card before and, and there's races where there's three, four, five horses that I think are in with a shout. But as Alexis has already alluded to earlier on, it wouldn't be a surprise if a horse turns up in this race or these races that hasn't really had that kind of form coming into the race. It's just that experience and the fact that they handle, you know, as Alexis said, the obstacles that the track throws up for them. So it, this is an exciting one, definitely. But Tara would will definitely want to keep an eye on. He's one of my favourite horses to photograph as well because he's so different looking. You know, he's... Uh, and I, I did say last year when he was on the track, you know, at York in particular, he always looked to me like he was going to be a horse that had the action that suited a grass track. So I think that that in itself may be kind of lends favour to his chances, I think, as well. So, yeah. Yeah. As you say, you know, you look at all these races, it's ultra competitive. Um, moving on to race three, Alexis, Frankie B. We're just looking at a slight, you know, slightly different horse in terms of the experience and the age scale here. Yeah, he is. He's an older horse, but he's very babyfied. So when we first got him, he had... Uh, we did actually race him at Musselburgh, which was two seasons ago, and he didn't like the transition from the grass to the um, sand. But that said, he didn't really like much that year. <laughs> yeah, he didn't. He, he didn't. He made breaks on the hard, and he made breaks on on the grass, and then he's gradually just grown in confidence and. He's progressed into a real nice racehorse. And I think Frankie B, if he gets over that grass, which I think he will this year, actually, just because he's matured a lot more. I think he should go close because he's strong and he's had a nice race under his belt um, at Turpins a couple of weeks ago. And I feel like he's come on for that race and he is in a in a better place going into Musselburgh than he was going into that race. Um, he just was suffering with some allergies a couple of weeks ago, which we seem to have got taken care of. He has a nice clean scope now. And um, so I, I feel he's in a better place going into this race than his last race. So, and he definitely gets the distance. And so as long as he stays pacing, then 
he should go close. I'm not saying he's going to win because, again, there's some nice horses in the race, but um, he should go close. He's a nice, strong uh, horse. Hey, Sarah, I like the vibes we're getting about Frankie V. Yeah, no, I, I can't I can't disagree with Alexis, firstly because she trains the horse. So, you know, who would I be to disagree? But no, one thing about Frankie B that I've noticed across, you know, all of his races really is he's a very, very strong finisher over a mile on a hard track. Um, and that always lends itself to being, you know, over that mile and three in Musselburgh. That's where you want to be coming into your own, really, is that last couple of furlongs. So Frankie B for me is, is a horse in the race that does stand out as, as a horse with a massive, massive chance. Um, a, a, with him, probably... I mean, there's a, there's a horse in here that hasn't got a huge amount of experience, but uh, Appleby really, really impressed people, and that was my dude. You know, he hasn't got his belt that a lot of the other horses have, but Appleby form, he looked really good. So he, he's in with a shame. Um, you've got other horses that, you know, I think are, are known to do well on, on grass tracks, the likes of Desert Ranger, um, some fantasy in the past as well. Star attraction might be one to keep an eye on. It's it's another wide open race. I have to mention Check on Dancer was a winner at Appleby as well. Um, so it's it's a very very competitive race. But in terms of the horse that I think probably has the strongest finish, which is where it really matters, that that would be Frankie Billy. Okay, now we're moving on to race four, and uh, a mare I've always been a, a big fan of, Annie Vai. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I have two runners in that race. Right, what's so, one of them, which one of them missed? I have Oakwood Coral as well. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it was a little bit, I wanted them to be separated, but obviously um, you're limited to the heats that are on there. So, um, yeah, Annie Vi, again, she, um, she didn't race great at Appleby. She... Um, there was the whole kerfuffle at the start with the horse getting loose in the paddock and then there was the fisherman that wouldn't get off the track and she was on the track for a very, very long time. And I don't know if you've noticed this, she's a bit of an anxious mare. She's quite hot, um, likes to get on with the job. And um, she came off the last bend and had her earplugs in traveling, absolutely lovely. And then Rocco said, she just felt like she hit a brick wall, he said, and he came off and he said, I, I think she's done something with the wind. And we spoke and we said, well, did you hear her making a noise? No, I didn't hear her make a noise, but she got all staggery towards the end, latter part of the race. So I suggested to him that I thought she had dehydrated because at that time we'd had no heat in England. And um, it was a really hot day that day. And I just think she hadn't adjusted and her being an excitable horse. It had just been too much for her. Um, so I had a scoped and a, a wind was good and I had a blood tested and she had dehydrated um, quite severely. Um, so we, um, she's been looked after for that again, just try and get her back on her feet. And we've had her rechecked again and she seems all good. She did, um, went in a nice qualifier where Rocco just looked after and she finished well and she trained a really good training trip here last week so hopefully again she's in a better place um than where she was at Appleby and she did run good at Musselburgh so we know she handles the obstacles as we spoke about before she finished second to actually Desert Ranger um two years ago so we know she does handle the track and gets the distance so hopefully we just have her a little bit better going into this race than we did the last one. I ju I'm just thinking now, I mean, we're, we're putting this on YouTube yeah. and, you know, we, we could have our, our fans in America watching this thinking, wow, what's it like in Britain? They hold up races because they're a fisherman that won't, re <laughs> won't leave the truck. <laughs> but that's, a, that's Appleby, isn't it? You know what I mean? <laughs> this is what happens over here. We don't get the regular problems of what other people do. But I was getting so frustrated with him. I was thinking, somebody just gonna get them in. <laughs> my horse is baking in the sunshine. There's another horse just creating. I was thinking, oh, it can't get any worse. Oh dear, racing delayed because of the fish. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um Right, oh good coral, oh good coral, dead heated last time. Yeah, I thought she ran a really tough race actually. 
she really got stretched that first quarter, which is difficult on a mile hard track. If you use them hard early on, it's very difficult for a horse to come home. And I thought she really toughed it out. So I was very impressed with that run for her. Um, she obviously won't get that same kind of trip at Musselburgh. So hopefully just get her nestled in on some nice cover and pop her out somewhere coming up the home straight and let her, let her come home. Um, she trains a mile and a half nice here, so I don't see any reason why she can't trip, um, handle the trip. She didn't like Appleby, though. That's the only thing. You know, the really soft spot that was going over the... She just couldn't get through it. That was her only thing. Um, but yeah, a good race um, beforehand. Nice little prep. So hopefully see how she gets on. <laughs> Sarah, what's your take on this race? Well, firstly, Alex, I don't think you need to worry about heat in Scotland because uh, yes. there's no such thing. There's never been a heat yeah. There's like one day in maybe April when it gets <laughs> and everyone strips off and that's it. Do you have fishermen? There may or may not. No, there are fishermen because uh, I'm going to name no, there's golfers. golfers. No, there's, there's, there's golfers at Musselburgh, but there will be a <laughs> there will be a fisherman at Musselburgh because Scott Mason he's into the fishing. He'll be at Musselburgh. Yeah. Um, no, there's, that that won't hold us up. Definitely not. Um, but no heat. I don't think will be an issue. Uh, and if I a little bit disappointed me at Appleby because I know it's a kind of track that would have really suited her. But I thought you know, like knowing that that she'd dehydrated, I just thought she'd come on for the run anyway from Musselburgh. Um, and Oakwood Coral, what you were saying there about the track at Appleby Alexis, that that was a report that came back to me from a couple of different drivers, a lot of different horses, was that they really, really didn't like the wet patch on the track. And and I think a lot of horses have come from Appleby to Musselburgh and people are thinking these horses aren't going to handle Musselburgh. They're not going to like it because they don't grass. And I don't yeah. think it's fair to, to assume that they're not going to grass because no. conditions at Appleby, yes, it was a grass track, but the going was, there was an issue with the track that was really affecting some horses more than others. And you could see that with the way horses were going wide down the home straight. Some of them were ducking inside the pylons, trying to avoid it. The horses knew it was there. And a couple of drivers said the same to me as well. So I, I think, you know, anybody that's got a horse that didn't particularly go well at Appleby doesn't need to be too disheartened coming to Musselboro because it's going to be a different kettle of fish. There won't be wet patches. The grass might be a little long, my reports from the, the men on the ground is that it's a little bit long, but but other than that, you're not going to face the same issue. So it is really then just coming down to you know the trip. So Anna Vi for me in particular, I think she's she's in with a really, really strong chance there. Um we'll have to mention transparency, the Irish horse, the oh. solid Irish raider who's coming across. I understand he's the short price anti-post favourite with Pino for the Tuesday handicap final. Uh, there was a rumour floating around earlier on that came to me that he was a non-runner, but uh, Amanda Richardson, Alan's wife, messaged me earlier asking where she could watch the racing tomorrow. So uh, I'm assuming the reason she's so keen to watch the racing is because Transparency is actually running. So as things stand, uh, Transparency will be in that racing year. As I mentioned, the anti-post favourite. He's got to be in with a chance for them to come all that way. You know, you, you can't discredit him. But again, no grass form whatsoever. Um, and, and the distance is a question mark, but... The fact they're coming suggests they think they're in with a massive shout in that race. Yep, good point, good point. So that is the fourth race in the card. And then I come to the trot and shambled from Entro. A new yeah. horse, a relatively new horse on our seat. He is, yes. He came over last winter um, and he's had... He was a horse apparently that everybody wanted out of the picks and I actually, I really, really like the horse, but he's just had so many issues and, um, you know, I understand that he was an exceptionally good horse in two, um, two years ago, 2018 actually, so three years ago, he had a lot of good form and good success, but um, he had some lameness issues and he's had... Um, some control issues so when he came to us he was a little thin and um, looked down in the dump so I spent all winter feeding him up getting him to look really good and um, jogged him up lovely for his eight weeks and then when it was time to do fast work he was just like a crazy bull that just wanted to <laughs> so he um, I was like oh my god if I don't have to I basically been too kind to the horse and um sorry uh yeah so um 
it got so bad that one day I had him harnessed up on his second trainer mile and uh, this is a funny story. So Rocco never wears a, a helmet when he trains at home. And uh, I had Sham, as we call him, on the cross ties, ready to go out to train. And I just had like a regular training set of harness on him, nothing fancy and um, bright when he came in. And he goes, what harness is that you've got on that horse? He said, I said, I'll just put some training. Are you trying to kill me? Are you seriously trying to kill me? He said, I was like, put a brand new set of harness on that horse, he said. It's like going on a roller coaster when you think all of the bolts are going to fall out. He said, that's what it feels like. <laughs> so he made me take off all the harness, put a brand new set on, because he would just pull so hard that, and Rob was strong. And then when he would put his head down and take off in a gallop, he put on, I'm not kidding you, he didn't put on his driving hat, he put on a motorbike helmet <laughs> to train this horse. Wow, we were just dying to laugh, but we couldn't laugh because he's like, obviously, and he never gets worried. Up. He's obviously very nervous to train him. And, and we went out and we were like, is he serious? He's putting a motorbike helmet on. And then we just watched him whiz around the track. <laughs> Oh dear, luckily he's settled down a lot now and we've worked really hard with him. And his last race at Tur Prince, he was pacing at the start and <laughs> he likes to pace, although he's a trotter, three leg paces. Um, and he was pacing at the start and he made a small break and he ended up going quite far back, but he actually trotted really nice once he got him down, but he just used himself a little bit after making that mistake early on. So, yeah, I think Musselboro will suit him as long as Rocco can get him all going away nice and um, everything. Such a nice horse. He just, we haven't seen the best of him yet. Did he ever yeah. race on grass at France? Yes, he did race on grass at France and it was right-handed. So I think that will um, pay, you know, benefit us actually is what I'm thinking. Sorry, my battery's dying. I'm going to have to move. <laughs> to a charger yeah so um i'm thinking that will will benefit him um going on grass and going right-handed and uh sarah have you had a look at the trotters i have yeah um alexis mentioned there before from intro there was parts of that last race at tier prince that he was quite eye-catching you know he made he made big moves during the race and, and looked settled but it was quite an improvement on on a previous start um for me the horse that i feel quite strongly about actually was uh, Cedric Pierre after the performance of Tia Prince last time out I think he was second to was it Emirate Levant he was second to right right to the line um Cedric Pierre kind of stood out some people felt that Emirate maybe hadn't run so well but actually Emirate ran well that night and it was actually that Cedric Pierre had, had himself had run out of his skin I thought so coming into this race that's for me he's the horse that I, I really really want to keep my eye on because I think I think he kept good company last time out and ran particularly well. When you look at the form of Emirat Levant since then, um, and Cedric Piergi obviously hasn't been out since, I think he's one really, really worth noting. But you've got older horses in the race that you can never, ever you know, discount. Horses like Viri de Rougen, uh, Vichy de Moem, they've been around a few times. I think they've probably done Musselburgh a couple of times as well since they've been here. Um, and and maybe the what Alexis said about the paces, maybe that applies to the trotters a little bit as well. You know, they've if these horses have put in a clean spin at Muscle before, they're, they're less likely, I think, maybe to make a mistake, even if they have changed hands since. So, um, yeah, a couple of the aged ones, but for me, Cedric Piergi, and I will be keeping an eye on, on the lady of the horse as well, but I'm sticking with the Mathers for this one for the trot. Okay. Uh, two questions for you, Sarah. Yeah. Um, they're quite easy questions. One is, what is going to win the final? Oh, oh yeah, real, simple. real, real simple. Thank you for that. And the other question is: Is there anything else on the card that you would, you would uh, shortlist? Okay, um, you do realise that whichever horse I pick to win the final will, from this moment forth, be jinxed completely and then have no chance of winning. Um, so, if there's any anybody who wants to suggest a horse that they want to have beat, they could tell me now. No, I, on a serious note, there was a horse at the race last year, um, and it, it falls into the same category as Tarwood Will, GD's King, and that is Laneside Logic. Um, I was yeah. impressed with that horse last year. 
And again, not sure how the horse is going to handle the grass, not sure how the horse is going to handle the trip, but I just like that the horse has got a bit of age about it. Uh, and, and I think last year when, when he was racing, we, we kind of were, were looking that this would be maybe where he would be coming to for 2021. So I'm going to say the inside logic for the final. That's my bold tip. I don't know what the betting is, Andy Post, but um, it's probably not a great price, in which case you know, nobody's going to thank me for it, especially not you know, Grant Carlin anyway, because I have now jinxed him. But uh, lane side logic for me for the final. Of the other races, um, there is another horse I wanted to mention, actually, which is in race... Uh, I was going to say race seven. It is race seven. It's the race before the final, and that is Air Beach. Um, again, this horse raced at Apple Bay. Um, you know, made him a bit of a mistake, but still ran on very, very well. But really impressively last week at York, new lifetime mark, 159 and four, joint fastest time of the day and, and what was essentially a maiden race. Um, you know, he's a horse that raced last year. Sable had a couple of problems with him. They had to deal with a few issues that arose. They believed that he had more potential than what he was showing on the track. Uh, and they persevered, they stuck with him. You know, he's trained down nice this year. And that runner, the Appleby obviously filled them with a lot of hope. When they went to York last week, they were they were finally rewarded for, I think, putting a lot of faith in the horse. And I do personally feel the, the way that he finished at Appleby and the way that he finished over the mile at York is very, very strong at finishing. I, I feel he's he's a horse I think will run on right to the line at Musselburgh. So I'm really sorry, young Huey, for jinxing you with Air Beach. He was also, he's known as Big Ron. Uh, Big Ron, the Mister One Fifty Nine, as Michael calls him. Now, um, he's my he's my tip as well for anybody else that wants a, a little bet on the day. Okay, Laneside Logic and Air Beach give it a favourable mention. A wonderful yeah. card there for Hurricane Pace Day. And now we're moving on to Wednesday. Um, so I presume you'll be sleeping in your own bed tomorrow night. Alexis, I, you know, you, you'll be yeah. taking horses home. And that wasn't... Oh, oh, sorry, I didn't know who you were asking the question to. And I thought, you shouldn't make assumptions about me, Darren. <laughs> oh, dear. Tappan can't edit that either. Um, no, it's in now. It's in. You're going home tomorrow. That's what I mean, Alexis. I am. I always travel. Um, yeah. We very rarely stay over. Right. So, so, right. Let, yeah, let's... we'll be... We'll travel up and then uh, fetch the Tuesday horses home and then get up yeah. and travel back up because obviously we've got horses to exercise at home as well before we leave. So it's not just as straightforward as unloading one load and reloading another. We have um, all of the others to exercise and the horses that are racing at York and Appleby need to train, uh, do their fast work on Wednesday morning. So it'll be a, a very early start for us Wednesday. Oh. That is some changeover. I mean, just tell us now, what time do you hope to be home tomorrow night? Um, well, it depends what time last, what time is the final schedule for? I'm not sure about... No, it's usually nine. nine yeah. yeah, nine. And it takes us about an hour to get packed up afterwards and the horse is cooled off and loaded. So we'll be away, hopefully for 10, 10, 30 and 3. If we get a good run, it'll be three hours home. So it'll be 11, 12, 1. Or at home around 1, one thirty, Then unload and um, put those horses to bed. So we should get in for about 2. And then we we'll probably as well be up at about quarter to 4. Oh. So to, um, we need oh. to get these fed and start to train all the uh, weekend horses so because obviously they have to have their work out and stretch the lungs and make sure they're prepared for their race it's not all just about the glory of Musselburgh they're, they're equally as important for the weekend so yeah it's um, Wednesday morning will be hectic <laughs> that is going to be tough and then get on the road and get to the race yeah well. Think. Wow. yeah yeah so yeah, and Thursday's tiring, and then we only have, like, Thursday, Friday, then we're back on the road Saturday, Sunday, so it's a really busy week, actually, but, no, yeah. it's good. <laughs> um, you wouldn't do anything else, would you? No, not really. <laughs> a day off might be nice. <laughs> um, right, on to Wednesday, having a look at the heats Wednesday, the Lion King. What sort of form would you say the Lion King is in going into this? I think he's in good form. He hasn't had a race. 
because obviously if we race and we risk moving his handicap, which we don't want to do. Um, so it's a lot of the, that's kind of a reason why a lot of these horses haven't raced as, as as others. They want to maintain the handicap going into the race. Um, so he hasn't raced. He did qualify last week and he went round in 158. He does stay, he has won round the track before. Um, so again, we know he handles the obstacles that we've spoke about. Um, Lion King's problem is his feet, but they're really good today. Rocker spent about an hour and a half on him today, just making sure his feet are in really good shape um, for tomorrow. He wears all fancy gel under his shoes and the, the nail salon doesn't have a look in on what that horse gets done to his feet. It's just, uh, they, it, it does get a lot of time spent on him just to keep him sound. Um, but his, his feet's good. So if his feet's good, then that's, that's we're 90% of the way there. He has a really good attitude and he loves to race. He's so genuine that, um, and obviously he's the granddaughter's horse. So we, um, he's down the Raymond and Frank gave him to Nevaeh, my granddaughter, but obviously she's young to have a license. So she still runs in the Hushka name as well. They were kind enough to give him to her. Um, so she's very, he's a very special horse in the barn. But hopefully I'll do her proud. <laughs> very, very special, a nice story. So you say, say about the feet, I mean, what is the problem with the feet? I mean, what is... Well, what he has is he has very shallow soles, so uh, they bruise very easily and he's very tender. Um, and when we x-rayed his feet, they don't exactly angle the right way. So what Rocker made is he designed um, a flat aluminium pad that goes under his shoe, which stabilises the whole of his foot and it stops any movement in his foot at all. And then at the back of it, he's, he drills a hole into this aluminium pad and he fills it with a copper sulfate gel, which takes out all of the sting in his feet and it, it kind of treats his feet whilst um, cushioning them. So it's like having shock absorbers underneath this pad. And um, it was just like night and day. We, we spent so much money um, having him having his ankles medicated, checking his knees and um, x-rays everywhere. We couldn't figure out why this horse was making breaks. He would just make breaks for no reason. The vet said, I, I can't find out what's wrong with him. And um, yeah, it was Rocco who thought it was his feet and um, credit to him really, since he started to shoe him like this. He, he had four wins last year and was very rarely unplaced and um, it's just night and day different horse. So, and um, Marin to moving up is the same. He has problem feet. So, um, and with this little design he's got going on, it's just got them diff like amazing. So good. So, hey, there's a few, this, this is a little business enterprise coming up now. <laughs> if you had time. <laughs> if you had time, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sarah, anything going to beat the horse with shock, shock absorbers? Look, I think all these heats on the Wednesday are so, so competitive. Yeah. Um, the Lion King is a horse that stands out because he has got good form, you know, previous form at the track, which obviously, you know, massively helps. Um, there's a couple of other horses that have, have run well on grass recently. A Rock and Roll Star was a winner at Appleby, won a heat uh, there a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Ring of Fire was, was, I think, a surprise winner at Appleby, not just for punters, but for the connections as well. It was their first trip to Appleby. Um, and Ring of Fire really really handled the, the grass track but as we, we spoke about earlier the conditions as well he's and he's a horse that's been around for a few years now and it's that experience I think you know and maybe there was more to it than that maybe he's just designed to be able to handle things like that but I think he's a horse that could run well no breaks uh, we need to mention the interesting there that Humingus has jumped off Cashel in favour of no breaks in this race uh, Cashel is one of the horses I mentioned didn't perform at Appleby as well as, as his hard track form from last year suggested um, and and I, I do think people can maybe not read too much into the Appleby form based on the conditions. Uh, you know, I think after Musselburgh, you'll have a better idea about how some of these horses that underperformed at Appleby, whether they really do handle grass or not. I think Cashel is one of them. I think I think this is a race where Cashel has a chance to sort of redeem himself a little 
on the grass. Um, if he doesn't run as well as you know you think he might based on his hard track form, then maybe it is the case that he is a better hard track horse with the speed he's got. But it is interesting to note that Hugh Mingus has jumped onto no brakes there. He missed Appleby. He uh, sustained an injury in the paddock. Not a massive one, but enough to put him out for Appleby. And he was a horse that I thought would handle Appleby nicely. So I think he could maybe go well in that race as well. Again, age and experience comes into it, uh, as it does for most of them, really. But uh, yeah, those those couple there, Ring of Fire, No Breaks, uh, The Lion King and, and A Rock and Roll Star. And I probably should mention Air Pioneer as well as a horse that I think is running into a little bit of form now. Um, some of the, the Dave Taft stable have been a little bit slow um, getting going this year, but I think Air Pioneer possibly is actually running into a a, a nice bit of fitness and form now as well, so he could be one to keep an eye on. Yes, another competitive uh, heat. Now, I'm going to move on to race four, heat three, and focus on your two charges here. Two horses that we know have got, you know, the ability, you know, they've be, been there, done it, bought a T-shirt, got Merrington moving up in a great season last season, and Will's driving Bobby Camden. So tell us about Merrington moving up and Bobby Camden. Well, they're both, they, they both love the track. So Merrington moving up, um, he's had four races on that track already and he's had three wins in a second. So um, he won the two-year-old derby, the three-year-old derby. He won his heat um, in 2019, which I think No Breaks was second to him actually, which might be why um, he was decided to drive No Breaks because Obviously, he had good form that year around the track. Um, sorry, that's um, Rocker's dad trying to ring me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he had uh, good form around the track. And um, Marin to Move Up was second to Meticulous in 2019. So, um yeah, he, he handles the track no problem. And Bobby Camden actually ran a blinder at Musselburgh in 2019. And he just stays all day long, that horse. Um, he was unfortunate at Appleby that he got a puncture on the first turn. So he had a, a locked on wheel for the whole of the race and he still didn't get left off. Um, so he, he is a little horse that as long as you just keep, you know, Asking him, he will keep running. He's such a genuine horse. And Willie Drysdale came off and he drove him to be third two years ago. And he said, ah, I just made an error. He said, I went to the outside and I should have gone to the inside. I would have won that final, is what he said to me. I would have won the final. So um, it's nice when a driver comes off and feels like he has some horse that was capable of winning the famous Musselboro Pace. And um, you can say he was third in that final, only just a whisker behind Merrington moving up. So, um, but there are also very good horses in that race. I'm not saying by any means it's a two horse race, but I do know that my two boys in that race will get the trip and will handle the track. So that's all you can ask for, really. I mean, it's a, it's a stellar lineup, um, Sarah, for that yeah. race. We've got Merrington moving yeah. up, and we know. They're, they're class acts. And then you've got the other class acts, you know, there's so many of them in the race. Uh, as um, Alexis has just alluded to, you know, Reed's passion, you know, a dual motor winner. You've got, the, you know, the class of Newtown Joe. You've got Wee Nige Northern Pride, the, we know, strong slayer. Um, you know. Okay, Sarah, I'm only allowing you to pick one horse here. Um, I couldn't do it. I refuse. I point back. <laughs> that there, that race there, would wouldn't look out of place as the final. Quite frankly, yeah. you see the quality of horses in that race, and you look at the, you know, and you think about the races they've won between them. That's an incredible lineup, you know. And to actually, you know, to be the trainer that's sending two horses into that race, with really, really strong chances. That speaks volumes as well. Um, I know, Alexis, you said end of last year, I think it was, that one of your goals was to, to win the famous Mosborough Pace final with a horse you bred yourself. So what yeah. we said, this is what Joey is flying the flag for here. Yeah. Yeah. He's the great white hope. But I look, I love Bobby Camden. I've loved Bobby Camden for years. I You I, can't not love Bobby Camden. Not I mean, honestly, he's just the gamest little horse. And everyone had him pegged as a grass track horse and, you know, three minute racing over two minute racing. And then last year, the horse had no option but to run all season on the hard tracks. 
and he, he posted two two 158 miles at York, which yeah. that seemed incredible. And you consider the number of races that he'd run before that to, to get to that point and at that stage of his career. And I just thought, good for you, Bobby. You know, things didn't suit, but you got on with the job and you actually, you know, turned things around and, and made people think, actually, that Bobby Cameron is pretty versatile. Um, yeah. Other horses in the race, you know, you mentioned them there, Darren. Reese Passions won two finals. You know, that, that you can never take that away from her. That's an incredible achievement. Um, loose change she was incredible at Appleby uh, and, and the word from the stable there is that the, the further she goes the better she goes um, and, and you know if she can get into the final they say she runs better second time as well so you know for a mare they really think that she's got a good chance going to Mosterborough as well my buddy was a winner at Appleby you know living star he p- people fancy him as well you know these horses yeah. they're, they're bred to run these types of races when you look at their pedigrees it's 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 a massive massive race personally if you're going to ask me to pick one there and i have now thought about it as i've talked my way through the card i am going to go with joey not because i want to jinx him not because i want to jinx you alexis but because there is the story that goes with it and you know what i think if you're going to set out to have a goal to win a famous must replace the horse you bred and you've won plenty of, of finals but if that is your goal and that is what you want to achieve i am 100 percent behind you and joey for that it is my year to win it. You know that. <laughs> Everyone else, you've won it for a lot of other people. I think it's time now that you were, that you won it for yourself. And I just Well though statistically I win it every other year. And, and because we missed so we missed we're just we're writing twenty twenty off and saying that was the year that you wouldn't have won it. I wouldn't have been won. on. Okay, yeah. So we're we're doing it like that. That's fine, as long as I know. So yeah, I'm I'm statistically I'm, because I wrote off 2015, because we were like 2009 Lexus, and then 2011 was Mahogany Jasper, 2013 was Spring Hill Alibi, 2015 didn't go ahead, which would have been my year, obviously. Obviously, yeah. And then 2017 was Gunner, 2019 was Matty. So 21 was technically, but then if they just don't include 20 then I'm buggered so no I think I think you should go with you you will only win it in an odd year which means that I need yeah. to get a horse ready 2022 I'm going to win it in an even year I'm going to win it in a year that you statistically can't win it that's my goal for next year that's why I'm not running I'm not running any horses at Muscle this year because I knew that so yeah I'm going for next year's famous Muscle Bar pace with one of my own <laughs> I put no pressure on Rocco when I pointed that out to him and we like stories. We want stories. And this is a story. We like yeah. stories. So, oh, I'm getting all excited now. <laughs> talking about it. Uh, right. So let's move on. Yeah, Trevor Star, you said, was out. Um, so we are on to the Futurity, Scottish Futurity. And you've got ch- chances here with Kelly Camden and Stamp Hill Ghost. Yeah, I mean, I d- they're just babies, so, and this is the first ever start, so. I know they both did qualify nice. They're both training nice at home. Um, but, again, it's just um, how will they be on grass? I've never had them on grass ever before in their life. And um, But they are both nice gated. They're not horses that are prone for making breaks and things at home. They're both two nice gated two-year-olds. So um, I think if they just get a nice trip around, they'll run home strong enough. Uh, I'm just, I really can't say, oh, yes, they've definitely got a strong chance or not, because I'm just unsure myself how, you know, when you have a baby, the first ever race, um, it's completely different to a qualifier on a hard track. So... Um, be just asking the drivers just to look after them, get them right down that back straight, round that first turn, and then once they're nicely settled into the race, just to try and let them run home will be um, the thing. I don't really want them going crazy down the backside. There's a few little um, rigs and furrows down there, and we don't want to knock them for the confidence for any future races. So look after them get them onto the home straight and um, hopefully they'll come home nicely and if they're good enough, they will win. As you say, it's a guessing game, but we've got some big stables represented and some beautiful yeah. aces in the race. Um, Sarah, 
have you, you know, any, any take on this, any feel for this, having watched qualifiers, etc.? Yeah, I mean, I've seen all these horses now in qualifiers and of those that have raced, I've watched them race as well. Um, there's very little experience behind them, obviously, because you know, three of the fields have had one race and that's it. It is still quite early in the season. Um, on that basis alone, you look at the form, it's stateside glory. He finished second at, at York. Um, the fact that Oakwood Mac finished third, I think it was actually quite a few legs difference in that race. Um, Kelly Camden, I liked her in a qualifier at Tier Prince the other week. Um and DK's juice. Do you know what DK's juice? Maybe hadn't had the easiest kind of education through qualifiers. Was fifth at Corbywood, but Buster David Moncrief has kind of done this before. With I think it was DK's Happy Forever came into Mosselburgh with very little form behind him, and then ran a massive race. So you know, maybe it's an advantage being Scottish at Mosselburgh. I don't know. It to me, it's it's a race that, that could go anyway because there's so many unknowns in it. There's so many variables. It's it's just one to for, you know as a punter you'd have to stand back and just say right I'm gonna just watch this and see how these horses go because there are other two odd races coming up off the back of this and and maybe you'll have a better idea about how some of these horses perform there afterwards. Okay, let's move on to race eight. Sarah can uh, uh, give the um, the race title a name check in a moment. Uh, let's talk about Reed's movie stars chances, Alexis. Um, well, she's a horse that's she has raced on grass. She won the Little Welsh Dragon um, heat. She was brought down in the final, but she she ran a blinder in a heat to win. Um, she made a break at Appleby and was went a long way back actually. And then, to be fair to her, she got back down and um, came through the field to finish third and qualify for the final. Um, so she she's. I think she's in pretty good form for going into that race. I'm quite happy that she's not eligible for the heat and final. I think that is enough for her, to be fair, because she's only had a couple of races and um, she didn't race last year. So I think this race will, will bring her on. And it's not quite as difficult as those heats. Those heats are, are quite difficult. So there are some still some nice horses in there, I'm not saying... There aren't, but they're just not quite as, um, you know, like your Lanesside Logic, Tara Wood, Will, Venorosa type horses. So it's yeah. a better race for her, I think. And Sarah, tell us about this race. Yeah. Go on, g g just give, a, give the race title a, a mention. Well, the, the Smart Bookmakers under 31 points pace. Yes. Smart, Mr. Smart Bookmakers has finally vacated the living room. Anyway, he's been sat here for the entire time, putting me off. And at that moment, heard his name and bolted. Um, yeah, no, uh, John, he, he sponsors it at Russellboro every year that it's on. So uh, this is just one of those things. And I have to probably say, you know, be smart, bet smart, because that's my dad's um, tagline for, for John, which John kind of feels a little bit uncomfortable about. But my dad keeps saying it. So I'm saying it now as well. Um, Alexis is right about this one. It, I, to me, it's quite um, quite an open race, but it's not maybe as, as hot as some of those heats are for the, the low-grade uh, heat and final on the Tuesday. Uh, there's a couple of horses. Reed's Move Bar is one of them. Lions Maverick, I think, possibly as well. Close Your Eyes uh, was a winner at Appleby a couple of weeks ago, so possibly has the grass form coming into it. Um, but to me... That's a that's a pretty wide open race, I think. That'll be interesting to see. I think the winner could come from various different places. And a couple of these horses I've not actually seen racing this year. So that'll be why, you know, I may be reluctant to 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 really pick a horse out in it. I may think Alexis' advice on this and just stick with Reed's movie star. Oh, okay. Right. Those, those same two questions I asked you a few minutes ago, Sarah. Right. What okay. is gonna win the group one? Famous Musselburgh Pace and anything else that's going to win or anything else with chances on Wednesday? I'm I'm going with, and this is a heart and head selection, right? Because, you know, logic states that statistically Alexis is going to win the final in 2021. Um, so on that basis, <laughs> and then because, because my heart loves the story and I really do love this horse as well. And the fact that he didn't go to America kind of filled me with a little bit of joy because I, I get a little bit sad when they leave in some of these horses because I love watching the race so much. So I am sticking with Merrington moving up for the final um, because I just think it's a, it's a big goal to set out to achieve having bred the winner of the famous Mossberg Pace and obviously trained it as well. So I'm going to, I'm going with him. 
Of the other races, a couple of horses that I wanted to mention. Um, we looked at the first heat. The second heat, I've got to mention this horse because I think we did a sulky show last year. Every sulky show we did when this horse was racing, I mentioned him, um, which connections love. Um, but Air Paparazzi, have to mention him, falls into the same category as Cashel in that people think that he didn't perform particularly well at Appleby. And that's because, oh, it was on grass, hard track speed horses. That isn't a fair assumption to make. We've talked a couple of times on the show, you know, the fact that the conditions weren't what you would expect a, a standard grass track to be like and what you would expect Mustelwood to be like. So I would like to give Air Paparazzi another chance on the grass, you know, over that distance. He has got good grass form before he came to that particular stable. Um, and that's not a, a, a negative reflection of the stable he's in because he didn't have that, that hard track form prior to his current stable with the Rileys. So... I just, I want to give Air Paparazzi another chance. I don't want people to discredit him at all. I think he, you know, he is still a horse that needs to, to prove, you know, that he is actually a good grass horse as well. And I think this is an opportunity. But equally in that race, there are horses worth mentioning, the likes of Dream Fair Duke, who I think is just a horse that keeps doing enough and he keeps rising and rising and rising through the classes. Um, and he's a, a good, strong finisher. He's pretty dependable as well. And even with Huster, big jump up now, uh, you know, due to his ratings increase from winning heat and final at Appleby. But he's a horse that massively, massively ran on in the later part of both his heat and final at Appleby. I think if he's got that in his tank, you know, muscle was really going to suit him. Take me to the limit was a winner at Appleby as well. And I understand there's been a massive, um, a massive lot of uh, movement on the betting market for Red Rogue, anti post as well. Uh, she was backed quite heavily at Appleby. Uh, there was a flurry of activity surrounding her there. And I think, I'm not sure where that's coming from because I don't know gamblers. So there's obviously rumours kind of flying about the Red Road could be in with a shout there as well. She has won the start of Florida at Jagaran before, so she has got good grass form, you know, you know, winning twice on the same day as well. So it, that's a really, really good race. And the other one that I wanted to mention was the Trot. Not uh, two trots, sorry, there's the mare's trot and then there's the uh, the kind of high grade trot. The mare's trot, I think Dane Major is massively running into form at the moment again. Um, and in the high grade trot, I'm going with Crazy de Cologne. I know people perhaps thought he disappointed at Appleby. Um, he, I think he was third there. He's proven to be very versatile and I just think he, he maybe will enjoy the trip at Musselburgh. And obviously I've kind of I've, <laughs> I've tipped Hugh O'Neill Jr. I've kind of tipped Joseph Riley. I've got to tip John Henry Nicholson at least one of his drives because I can't leave the drivers out. So those three boys have got to mention and therefore I have not shown any favouritism and nobody's going to text me when they watch this and say, why didn't you mention me, Sarah? So I've uh, ticked that box. So it's going to be a good week for the sponsored drivers. Well, do you know what? As long as they all come off the track safe in one piece with the horses, you know, all okay. That's the main thing I care about. It's a long season and I just want to get them out and race it. I feel like I'm their manager. I'd send them back yeah. out to war for me. Um, no, I just I just want them to come back in one piece. I mean, that goes for all drivers um, and all horses as well, but particularly those three because they do make going racing a lot more fun um, with just the fact that they kind of jumped on board with all my crazy ideas. So I wish them all the best, really. That's the main thing. Well, listen, guys, it's a wonderful two days racing, ultra competitive, uh, and it's oozing, oozing with quality. We've got quality action start to finish. Uh, Alexis, we wish you, Rocker and the whole team, all the very best of luck. And uh, it's going to be two tough days, a lot of graph, and hopefully a lot of, a lot of enjoyment and satisfaction along the way. I just don't know how you're going to stay awake, though. I really don't. I'm, I'm tired of thinking about it. No, I will manage. And um, Rock was very grateful because I never got to go to the shops tonight to buy something new to wear because I decided to do this instead. So it's really grateful. Like you've saved him probably three or four hundred pounds. Listen, listen, you, you'll probably get your own back at some point. No, I was yeah. going to say, Alexis, if, if all else fails, you could just borrow his motorcycle helmet. Just wear that. Yeah, I know. yeah. It, it it doesn't fit me honestly. It's got a bigger head than me. Well, <laughs> it's a, it, it's been enjoyable. It's been it's 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 uh, we've certainly learned a fair bit about British harness racing, about mo <laughs> motorcycle helmets and rogue fishermen on tracks and things like that. It's been it's been great. But listen, thank you very much for joining us tonight, and and good luck at Musselburgh. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you very much. <laughs> and Sarah, thank you as ever. You're welcome. That was thoroughly enjoyable. Uh, good luck to everybody racing at Mosselborough the next few days. Yeah, thanks yeah. for watching the Folky Show, folks. Enjoy Mosselborough.